Welcome back to Board Game Breakdown, I'm Christopher Solomon. In this burst video, we'll be diving into the first of the South Tigris trilogy from Garfield Games called Wayfarers of the South Tigris. If you're looking for a more detailed video that explores setup, gameplay, and even the solo variant, please click this link here for our full review. If not, let's jump right in and see what Wayfarers is all about. Like many previous games designed by Shim Phillips, Wayfarers is an amalgamation of many different modern board gaming mechanisms, but this time around, dice will play a central role in bringing victory to the players. On a player's turn, they can do one of three actions. Place a die, place a worker on a card around the main board, or rest. When placing a die, players can only place it onto one of the white spaces on their player board, or on one of the white spaces on a land or sea card they've played into their city. Many times there is an icon on the white space that players will need to have in order to use that space. That is where your caravan can help you out. The caravan is a grid on the top of your player board where players can deploy upgrade tiles to enhance the icons each die can represent. As players upgrade their caravan, they have more options in where they can put their die and what actions the die can trigger. Players start with both a yellow and a blue worker and these can be placed on certain cards around the board for the second action. When a worker is placed, the player gets to activate the action on the board opposite of the card they place their worker on. Unlike many other games, players do not get to take the workers back at the end of their turn. In Wayfarers, workers stay on cards until the card is bought by a player, and then the player gains both the card and the worker. This adds an interesting level as players won't always have the same amount of workers as they progress through the game. Besides being able to buy land and sea cards, both which help expand the amount of dice spaces you own, players can gain three other types of cards. Townsfolk cards, space cards, and inspiration cards. Townsfolk cards are placed under a land or sea card, typically enhancing the action printed on the card. Space cards go above land or sea cards and add additional scoring options at game end. Lastly, inspiration cards go above space cards and give a specific goal for the player to meet. Once the goal is met, the scoring of the space card below the inspiration card is usually doubled. Players will also want to take actions to allow them to move down the journaling track. This track allows players access to green worker meeples as well as giving them the only way to gain special upgrade tiles and inspiration cards. Players need to plan ahead though because after the first level of the journal track, players have to collect certain tags in their city in order to continue to progress down the track. Lastly, players can choose to rest which enables them to reroll their die, journal once, and possibly gain some additional rewards. The end game is triggered when a player reaches the last section of the journal track and then victory points are scored based on sets of tags collected, tiles in your caravan, and the assorted space cards. Wayfarers even has a wonderful solo variant where players can play against one of four different AI players. If you're a fan of previous Garfield games or you're a fan of dice placement and set collection, you won't want to miss out on Wayfarers of the South Tigers. Please visit the website at BoardGameBreakdown.com for more reviews and videos and thanks for watching.